Good evening, everybody. You're very welcome to this Christmas baking Q&A with myself, Shane Smith. I hope that you're all well. I'll give it a couple of minutes, like always, just to give you time for people to log on. Uh, yes, I see we have people joining. Amazing. Hi, Angela. Angelina, excuse me. Um, if you would give me a little thumbs up there, guys, or a little heart or something, just to let me know that you can hear me A-OK. -okay. Um, we have some Q&A Christmas themed questions here. So we're going to be going through um, the questions that um, you guys have submitted in. Um, so yeah, if you can give me a little thumbs up or a little wave or something, just to let me know that I'm not jabbering just to myself. <laughs> no, we have a good few people joining in. That's great. Amazing. So I presume you can all hear me okay, which is good. Um, and yes, we are doing a baking Q&A today. So we are going to be chatting all things Christmas. Now there's one or two little rogue questions after coming in there that may not be Christmas themed, but um, we'll answer them as well. So um, we, um, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do fire them at me. As I said, we are talking all things Christmas today, Christmas baking and um, that kind of thing. So yeah, if you do have any questions in regards to any Christmas uh, recipes that you've tried out before or you, you're thinking of trying out, um, just let me know and I will be able to hopefully answer them for you. Um, so where are we all tuning in from this evening? Are we all over the country or do we have anyone outside the island further afield? Still holding out. I think India was the furthest away we had somebody tuning in from before. Um, but yeah, let me know if you can where you're all tuning in from. Um, again, that's just me being pure nosy. And um, we will get started. Francis, Syria. Oh, Wexford. A lovely part of the country. Um, love Wexford. I was down there actually the Enniscorty uh, Fruit Festival or a uh, Rockin' Fruit Festival there during the summer it was so good um such a great atmosphere the sun shone for um part of the day which was good and uh, we have dublin we have galway amazing we have a good selection there as well which is great okay perfect so without further ado i am going to start going through the questions here again these are kind of um newbridge lovely part of the country as well and um, we have some christmas kind of baking questions and people looking for tips and tricks and advice and all that kind of good stuff as well. So um, I'm going to go through all of that. And again, as I said, anyone who has any questions, please do fire them in the little uh, question box below and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, let's get started. Um, we have Laura sent this message in. Can I use ground ginger instead of fresh ginger? Okay, Laura, what I would say to you in regards to that question is, this all depends on what you're making, okay? So it, it depends if it's for baking, it depends if you're making a marinade. Um, so you will have um, a couple of benefits of using dried and you will obviously have benefits from using uh, fresh as well. If you're making a marinade, I would always use fresh ginger. So again, your ginger is one of those handy ingredients um, where you can actually uh, Get your ginger and you can freeze it down and then take out the little uh, pieces whenever you need them and um, but i would say to you if you're making a marinade whether that's for um chicken or pork or whatever i would always use fresh ginger some recipes as well call for fresh ginger it's a totally different flavor than you're going to get from your dry ginger and um, so you don't need a huge amount of it but it is absolutely beautiful and um, if you're baking i would generally say nine times out of ten i would always use a uh, the dried ginger and um, whether it's for gingerbread biscuits or um uh, cakes or if you're even doing like a fruit cake you can add in some ginger in there as well so i would say for for baking i would probably steer towards your dry ginger um or your ground ginger and fresh ginger again for making marinades but that's not saying of course you can use fresh ginger in baking as well it really does depend on the recipe and um, so again um hi hi guys how are you farmhouse in cork oh my god one of my favorite places um i hope you're keeping well um so next up we have that's the ginger question answered as well so we have where are we here now i have my computer here by the way in case i'm looking away into the distance here um 
Have you any suggestions for edible Christmas gifts? And that comes in from Karen. So Karen, yeah, this time of year, I think edible gifts are absolutely um, six to a dozen. They're, they're a really nice thing to do as well. I generally always love to give and receive food kind of gifts this time of year. And um, if it makes someone's life a little bit easier by gifting them some food, and um, whether that's an edible gift or a little hamper, um, that's something that I always do. So yeah, again, anything that's going to have a good shelf life. And that's something that you have to keep in mind. If you're going to gift somebody food and um, you don't really want something that's going to be perishable, that's going to go off in a matter of, of, of days or stuff that they need to keep cold. So if you are going to be gifting someone some edible gifts, um, shelf life is key. OK, so again, um, if you want to buy somebody like a fresh, soft cheese, probably not ideal because it has to be transported or if you're giving it to them, it needs to be kept cold. And the shelf life wouldn't be overly long on something so again do keep that in mind but again if you're going for something that's going to keep for a longer period of time then you have little cookies truffles fudge and um, biscottis anything again that um, will keep for a week or two truffles that kind of a thing um, i'm actually doing a edible christmas gift cookery class um over on my uh, in my cookery school so um, my handle is at Chef Shane Smith on Instagram and the website is chefshanesmith.ie. So I have a really nice one. It's kind of geared more for the younger bakers in your house. So I'm going to be doing that in December. I just don't know the date off the top of my head. Um, so that is a cook along class where you can come and we're going to be making three really, really tasty, delicious. We're making little melting snowman cookies Um, we're making um, these kind of no bake Christmas puddings and there is something else that's gone off the top of my head right now um, but yeah that's over on my website chefshanesmith.ie and over on my Instagram as well if you have any interest in kind of an edible uh, Christmas gift cookery class send me a message and um, I can send you over the details on that but again the one thing that you need to keep in mind is your um, your shelf life that you're not going to give something to somebody that needs to be kept refrigerated or something that's going to melt or something that is going to spoil in a couple of days okay so just to keep that in mind as well um mm -mm -mm -mm. next question here how long before christmas should i start making my christmas cake and that question comes in from mary and um, so mary what i would say to you christmas cake is one of those things where you can make it weeks weeks months in advance so i would say to be personally my cutoff time um i'd be saying a month before so there's still time if you wanted to make a christmas cake now obviously the longer you leave it the more you can soak it with alcohol and um, the longer it'll preserve and the, the the flavors will mature so obviously if you're making um a cake a couple of weeks before christmas it may not have the full length of time to mature to get all of those lovely lovely flavors it'll still be delicious but it'll just be a, a relatively young Christmas cake in comparison to one that will going to be made in October. So again, Mary, if you are looking for a recipe or how to make a Christmas cake, I'm actually doing a baking gem and um, Christmas cake series at the moment. And in the first episode, we soaked the fruit, we got the decorations, edible decorations ready. The second one, we actually baked the cake. And then the next one, which is coming up the second week in December, we'll be actually decorating and assembling the cake. So again, that, that'll be saved on the gem page if you want to check that out. Um, next question we have coming in from Yvonne. Uh, why does my gingerbread cook... No, why are my gingerbread cookies uh, rock hard? I use honey, eggs, flour, soda, bicar uh, bicarbonate of soda. And that's from Yvonne. So... Basically, Yvonne, what I would say to you is there's a few things you can do, okay? I see here that you haven't mentioned sugar, that you're probably using honey as a natural sweetener, which is absolutely perfect. But sometimes that can have an effect on the texture of your cookies. Sugar is one of those things where you put it into bakes, cookies, breads, brownies, you name it. And it keeps them nice and soft and it helps with the texture of the cookies as well and the gingerbread. So I would say to you, if you aren't opposed to using sugar, definitely try and use a gingerbread recipe that um, has sugar in it um, and that will kind of leave your um, your gingerbreads a little bit softer and probably easier to chew on as well. Um, you can bake them a little bit less if you find that they're, they're really, really hard. So I would say reduce your cooking time and maybe temperature as well and kind of cook them till they're lightly golden brown and that should leave them a little bit softer. Um, and I would say that if, you, if you've if you baked gingerbreads and you find that they're very, very hard, I would always pop them into a um, Tupperware container and just kind of close the lid. And after about a day or two, they'll naturally start to soften up a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you find that it's the initial bake and the initial gingerbread that kind of goes quite hard, 
what I would say to you is um, possibly look at your recipe and use a recipe that uses sugar more so than honey. That could be a reason why. Okay, um, where are we next? This, res oh, this recipe, this question even, comes in from Kathy. This is a personal one, Shane. What is your favorite Christmas treat? Um, I don't know. I think my favorite, I, I'm a, I have confessed, mince pie fanatic. Absolutely could eat mince pies all year long. And I have been noted to, the one positive thing is now that things seem to be getting, um, coming into the shops earlier and earlier, you can get mince pies nearly in September, which I'm secretly delighted about. I might have already had a packet or two. Um, so mince pies with a nice, thick, vanilla custard i think if that was my yeah that'd be my christmas my christmas treat who's with me on the mince pies are we the same or is anyone holding out do people have a, a certain time that you wait until you start eating mince pies i'd be really interested to know i have absolutely zero willpower and i've said it from day one so if there was mince pies available in the shops in june i would probably be first in line and um, so yeah it'd be interesting to see do certain people do you actually wait um, after a certain point in December before you start buying Christmas stuff or making Christmas stuff or nibbling on them I'd love to know that actually and um, so yes Kathy that would be my Christmas treat I think a nice warm mince pie with a nice thick vanilla custard sorted and um, next one up um, again guys any questions whatsoever please fire them at me if it's any baking questions they don't necessarily have to be Christmas related and um, but please do fire them in Amy, I work in a bakery and mince pies are strictly December ones. Yes. Oh, well, I think that's in a lot of places, Amy. Um, I think a lot of places do hold out, but I think more retail in the shops, they're um, starting to come. I actually know the last restaurant um, that I worked in, we used to actually start mid-December or mid-November, I should say. And people used to go crazy for them. So, yeah, um, I would be on the other side of the fence. I would eat them in June. <laughs> I know that probably says a lot about me, um, but yeah, no, they are. And you know what? In a way, they are kind of special when you kind of leave them to the, the four weeks of December. I think you do enjoy them that little bit more. Again, as I said, it's just a zero willpower on my behalf. Um, this question comes in from Helen. Um, it's not really baking, but could you advise on how early I have to make eggnog and how long it lasts in the fridge after making it? Okay. So we are jumping the pond. We are heading over to the States, America more so for this question. I think that um, eggnog is popular-ish here, but definitely a lot more popular in um, America and Canada. I know when I lived in Canada, um, eggnog was everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Um, so luckily I lived over there and I know um, how to make it and I have made it. There are tons of different recipes, Helen, in regards to making eggnog, okay? And what I would say to you is that the majority majority of them online does call for using raw egg yolks. You don't necessarily use the egg whites as such. Some recipes call for it, but generally you don't. So firstly, you need to be aware of that, that you are consuming raw egg yolk, and that's fine just so you are aware of that and um, so what i would say to you initially is if you are planning on making eggnog i personally would use pasteurized egg yolks uh, it just removes that little element of, of doubt and fear and you know that's just one thing to be aware of and um, the more alcohol that you add to eggnog the longer it will last okay so if you're not adding any alcohol to your eggnog i would say that you need to make it and consume it on the same day if you are going to be adding in a good hit of alcohol, then your eggnog can last two, three days. Now, there are recipes that call to make eggnog by almost making like a creme anglaise. So basically, you're heating up your milk, you're adding that to your nutmeg and egg yolks, and you're um, cooking that um, over um, heat, and it kind of thickens up slightly. That way, you're cooking the eggs, um, and it's, it's just a safer way. And again, if you're going to be doing that style of a recipe, Again, three days would be the limit on that, okay? So again, the more booze you add, it'll extend the shelf life. Um, but if you've no alcohol in there, then I'd be saying make and eat on the same day. And again, if you're kind of going to be um, heat treating it, so cooking it like a custard, three days in the fridge. That's what I would be saying. Um, so Fanula has asked, fun and um, easy baking to do with the children. Yes. So again, I think this time of year, it's great to kind of get into the kitchen if you have the time to bake with the kids. Um, so the usual ones are always good. Try and look for 
for no bake recipes as well, which means that you just, you can bake basically by using the microwave or the fridge. So you're setting chocolate or you're melting marshmallows in the, in the microwave that you don't necessarily have to turn the oven on. And again, that's, I think half the battle as well. Um, but then again, if you find a really nice gingerbread recipe that you can do tons of things between um, little gingerbread village, gingerbread people. Um, one year I actually done gingerbread place names for dinner. So I had gingerbread cookies with everyone's name on them for, as their, their table place names. Fierce fancy, and we're not that fancy at home, but I just <laughs> thought I'd do it one year and it was really cute. And you can eat your own place name then for dinner as well. Um, but again, nice, simple things. And again, depending on the age group of the kids that you have as well, if you want to kind of eliminate a little bit of the, the, the time and stuff as well, like I know weighing up takes a huge amount of time for some people, just especially if there's two or three kids involved as well. So you can actually weigh up in advance, have everything ready and then just let the kids. And I think you need to also just get yourself prepared that it's going to be a little bit messy. There's going to be flour everywhere depending on what you're making. So just to keep that in mind as well. But easy recipes, again, Finula, if you're interested, I am running a, a Christmas gift to young baker class um, in December. And that is making three really, really delicious um, festivates. I actually have my, I wanna check. Here's me thinking I couldn't remember what was the third recipe on my class. So I'm just gonna pull that up here. Um, so yeah, on that class, that is on the 18th of December. And um, I am going to be making little individual um, no bake chocolate puddings and uh, melting snowmen um cookies and that's it chocolate crinkle cookies they're the three um dishes that i'll be making on um my young chef um kids kind of baking class again that's the 18th of december so if you head on over to my instagram you'll be able to contact me there about that if it's something that you are interested in you're looking for a nice fun class to bake with your young bakers um Next up here, what do we have? Um, this is coming from Emer. Love the idea of the edible place names. It's really nice. Um, it's, I'll, I'll be sharing that one over on my Instagram in the coming, probably next week or so, I have it lined up. It's a really, really cute one as well. I think it's really nice to, to have something different. And I just done nice little circular ones and um, piped the names on them as well. It's just something a little bit different as well. It's cute. And that's one thing with gingerbread. It's got a really good shelf life on them. So you can make them well in advance. Um, Fanula, you're more than welcome. Absolutely no problem at all. Um, can I use instant icing for making gingerbread house? And that question comes in from Emer. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm keeping nine questions here as well. And um, yes, absolutely. So obviously, Gem have the royal icing, um, and it's perfect for decorating um, e cookies. And clears are amazing. Class loved it flying out. Um, good stuff. Thank you, Sandy. Any tips on how, uh, tips to make buttercream? Perfect consistency. Amy, did you send a question in? Because we do have, no, that's coming in from someone else. I'm going to be touching on that. Would you believe it's the next question? So we're going to be touching on um, buttercreams in the next question. So Amy, we will jump into that one. Um, so yes, going back to the royal icing for the gingerbread house. Um, yes, yeah, so the gem royal icing is absolutely perfect. Um, so I'm just looking here as well. Perfect consistency and a white color. I do have a little tip on the white color. I will get to that in a second. Um, so it's really good for decorating biscuits, cupcakes. You just add a little bit of water and you mix it up. So again, you control the thickness of that. So it would be perfect for making gingerbread houses as well. So you're putting that into your mixer or using a hand mixer and you beat that up until it's nice and thick. And again, the thicker it is, the faster you can assemble your gingerbread house. So Emer, absolutely. The gem royal icing would be absolutely perfect for that. Um, I actually lied, Amy. I've got one more question before the buttercream, but we will get to that one next. The next question comes in from Gary. And Gary wants to know is, my fudge is rock hard the day after making it. Why is that? Um, so basically what I would say to you, Gary, is that if your fudge is going really, really hard the after you make it, whether it's that evening or the next day, is you're bringing your sugar mix to too high of a temperature, okay? So whenever you're making a fudge, um, whether it's a vanilla fudge, butter fudge, walnut raisin fudge, whatever um, fudge that you are making, generally speaking, your temperature for your fudge, you should be bringing it to about 113, 115 maximum Celsius. So when making fudge, I would always recommend using a sugar thermometer. And I know people always go, <gasps> Sugar thermometer, where would I get one of those? They're actually really inexpensive and very easy to order. Like absolutely everything is available online these days. So if you do make, if you want to make a few batches of fudge, I would recommend if you, if you want to, to invest in a sugar thermometer, they're absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, it sounds to me 
as if you're going above the 115 and you're cooking it to too high a temperature. So then when it cools down, it's actually rock, rock hard. So again, there is a happy balance to get it set and not that it's gooey, but also not that it's too hard to eat. So um, where I'd say 100% Gary, where you're going wrong there is your temperature. So if you're struggling or you do like to make fudge a good bit, then I would say to you, I used to work, would you believe, in a in a fudge um, store when I lived in Canada. We used to, it used to be on the boardwalk and about three cruise ships used to come in a day. So we used to make oh, not only fudge, there was about 10 different types of handmade chocolates. We done cakes and everything. So um, I still have nightmares about making fudge. <laughs> not, not really nightmares, but when you're making like... 40 50 kg um a day uh every day <laughs> it brings back lots of memories good memories as well the people uh were amazing but um yes temperature 113 to 115 don't go over that if you can and that will ensure that you're getting a nice crumbly and it's important too that you you aerate your fudge what i used to do in the shop that i worked in we had these large marble tables and you poured your fudge out and then you paddled it um so you're getting air in there which kind of aerates it and gives it a nice crumbly texture as well okay so that's just a couple of tips. Now, Amy, we are jumping onto the buttercream question. So this question initially came in from um, a lady called Jenny, and she just wants to know, how do you make the perfect buttercream? Okay, so this is kind of like asking, like, how long is a piece of string? It's just one of those kind of, it depends on what type of buttercream you're making. Okay, so let's talk about buttercreams first, and then we will jump into how to make them. So you've got your more kind of traditional um, American style buttercreams. And that basically just is room temperature butter and icing sugar. Some people put two parts um, sugar to butter. Some people put equal amounts. That all depends on the recipe. Um, the key for that is, if at all possible, try and use unsalted butter. It gives you more of a neutral base. Um, and try 100% use room temperature butter. If your butter's cold, um, you have to mix it longer and it just becomes a little bit more of a, a nuisance. So again, if you're making that um, that kind of um, uh, American style buttercream, room temperature butter, icing sugar, dash of vanilla, um, some recipes call for splash of milk, splash of cream, that will leave it easier to pipe. So again, that's up to yourself. I'm um, just jumping in here. Neve wants to know what my favorite icing for cupcakes is. You're getting me on the on the spot here, uh, Neve. I think for me, oh, I'd have to go chocolate. I'd have to go chocolate. Yeah, I think I'd be lying to myself and everyone else if I if I didn't. So a nice chocolate buttercream uh, would be my favorite. Um, so yeah, buttercreams. If you are making that American style, room temperature butter, unsalted butter, if at all possible, you can use salt it. That's fine. Um, icing sugar, and you can throw in a splash of milk. Good quality vanilla always helps with flavor as well. If you're making a Swiss meringue buttercream, that is completely different, okay? So basically, for your Swiss meringue buttercream, you're going to be kind of gently heating your egg whites and your sugar over like a pot of simmering water, and you whisk that up until it gets nice and frothy, and then you whisk it at full speed in your mixer until it goes cold, and then you're adding in your room temperature butter, and you get a gorgeous, silky, smooth uh, buttercream. Really, really good for cake decorating, really good for cupcakes. Takes a little bit more work than your just regular cold set buttercream, but absolutely worth it. Also got Italian meringue buttercream, and then we're getting up a little bit more of a um, technical here now, because you're going to be making an Italian meringue. So to make an Italian meringue, basically, you have to whisk up your egg whites, um, and then you need to be pouring over boiled sugar on top of that. And then your boiled sugar, so you're basically making, uh, you're, you're kind of making a really, really hot syrup. You don't bring it as far as a, um, a caramel, but then you pour your hot syrup onto the whisking um, egg whites. And that cooks your egg whites and gives you a really thick, glossy Italian meringue. And then you start adding in your room temperature butter and that's your Italian meringue buttercream. Um, and then your French buttercream is basically the same as the Italian meringue buttercream, only for you using egg yolks instead of whites. Mm -hmm. And it kind of has the consistency of a really thick custard, keeping in mind that you will have a yellowy kind of hue to that. So again, I hope, Amy, that answers some of your questions in regards to the type of buttercreams. It all just depends on the type that you're making. But if it's just a classic American style buttercream, then I would say to you, um, room temperature butter, icing sugar, good splash of vanilla and um, milk cream if you want to let it down a bit. When it comes to the colouring, if you're going to be making a um, an American style buttercream which is just your butter and icing sugar you have to whip it for a good 20-25 minutes in your stand mixer to kind of ensure that the buttercream goes pale enough 
that you're getting rid of that yellow color because that's not what you want obviously if you're just going to add cocoa powder in there or food coloring then you don't need to worry about it so much but if you're just looking for a neutral kind of really creamy pale buttercream one you got to mix it mix it until the butter goes so pale that you use that yellow color and um, also if you make the swiss meringue buttercream um i would say to you or the italian meringue buttercream you get a less lesser yellow color off those and you get more of a neutrally kind of white creamy color which then is a great base to use for different colors as well another little tip that we we were shown in college as well to neutralize the yellow color if you have um like a, a violet or purple um food coloring if you just dip the tip of your knife into that kind of like purple food coloring and i mean put the, the smallest amount in there that purple cancels out the yellow and um, if you put any too much obviously of that violet or purple color in you will get that kind of violet color of buttercream which is not what you're looking for you're just looking to cancel out that yellow color and um, so a little tiny tip of the knife into like a, a purple food coloring will cancel out that yellow but i mean the smallest smallest amount when you think that you've gone small think smaller again and that's another way to get rid of the um the yellow kind of a color and um, neve wants to know here can we use american buttercream to crumb coat and frost cakes yes absolutely neve 100 again the key for crumb coating and frosting of your cakes is to ensure that your buttercream is soft enough so again room temperature butter and don't be afraid to put it into the mixer and walk away from it for 10 15 20 minutes again come back and scrape it down but you do want a really lovely soft. If your buttercream is anyways hard or starts to cool down on you, what happens is when you go to crumb coat it is that the buttercream starts to pull the crumbs off the cake as well. And then you're left with kind of like a rough finished buttercream. So again, what I would say to you is um, ensure your buttercream is really soft. And again, that just leaves your life so much easier. Give it a crumb coat and use it for assembling and then pop it into the fridge or freezer for 10 15 minutes and then finish it off then with a nice smooth depending on the finish that you're going for but yeah an american buttercream 100 percent. but just ensure that it is nice and soft so i think that's all things buttercream talked about just for the moment um where are we next here with questions again guys please fire in any questions that you have um i have a question here it's not technically a christmas question but it comes in, why do my cupcakes flop when I take them out of the oven? So again, there's there could be a number of factors here on this. What I would say to you is um, opening the oven door too early before they're fully cooked um, allows cold air into the oven, which may cause the center of your cupcakes to kind of collapse or dip down um, in the center. So it could be the fact that the cold air is getting in when they're not fully cooked. Um, if you over whip your cupcake mix at the at the early stages when you're making it, you're incorporating a lot of air, which technically you need, but you don't want to add too much air into the mix. So what happens is then your cupcakes can puff up really nice in the oven, but as corner as it bakes, they puff up and then they collapse. Um, and that's because you've probably incorporated a little bit too much air, which means you've mixed your, your batter probably for a little bit too long in the beginning stages. And then finally, another uh, reason why that could happen would be that you, if you are using a raising agent, um, I don't use a raising agent in my cupcakes. I rely on the creaming method and the eggs to get a nice rise. But if you are using baking powder or self-raising flour, um, I wouldn't say self-raising flour as much. It's more if you add in extra baking powder if you add in too much raising agent, that can cause your cupcakes to rise up really fast and then the structure is in there to hold it and it can collapse down. So that can cause your cupcakes to dip in the center as well. It's just three different ideas again. It could be down to the recipe. I, I'm not really 100% sure, but those three tips there could um, could be the reason for that. Um, Neof wants to know any fast Christmas desserts. Um, so what would be a good fast Christmas dessert? I think for ease of service, a dessert that you can make in advance, which I think is really important this time of year, Christmas time, because I think everyone's so busy um, getting starters and mains and the 74 sides of potatoes that go with it as well. Sorry, why does my dulce leche butter cream split butter icing sugar? I will um, come back to you on that dulce leche one. That's a really good question. Um, so basically... Um, fast desserts to um serve i would say meringue you cannot go too wrong with a meringue for christmas day because i think there's, there's so much food consumed between starters and main course it's nice to finish on a nice light dessert and a meringue is really good for that as well and a meringue you can make 
up to a week in advance and then you're literally just serving it so i think um neve to answer your question for ease of service then i would say to you meringue is always handy the same with any dessert you can make in advance and um, so i would say to you like tiramisu uh, panna cotta trifle good old trifle um they are all desserts that you can make a day or two in advance and leaving the fridge covered and you're literally taking it out and serving it up so there's no technically too many too much baking involved you know what i mean and just leaves your life a lot easier and if in doubt you can't really go too wrong with an ice cream as well um giving you so many ideas amazing if that's what i like to hear um so jumping back over to the dulce leche and um, buttercream and why is it splitting it's it's basically because you're oversaturating your buttercream with two it's like it's like when you're trying to get three egg mixed into like butter and sugar when you're making a sponge like there's only so much or what other way can i describe it even simpler if you if you dip a, a sponge in a bucket of water and let all the water soak in there really is only so much water that sponge can hold obviously the minute you squeeze it it all comes out but when you saturate something in a liquid just say a sponge for example there really is only so much water that sponge can hold and the same goes for again if you're creaming butter and sugar sugar and adding eggs to make a sponge there's only so much that butter and sugar can hold so many eggs it can hold before it splits i think we've all added in eggs too fast or too many of them and the mix splits and it just looks horrible it will come back when you add in dry ingredients but the same goes for the dulce leche buttercream there really is only so much additional ingredients that your um your buttercream can hold so i would say that what the problem is that there's probably a ratio of you're putting in too much of the caramel to the buttercream you also run the risk of buttercreams if you over whip it and um, so you're whipping your butter and your icing sugar until it's really soft and creamy and it's lovely it kind of comes up to room temperature and then when you add like a, a, a caramel to it, then it can run the risk of splitting. So what you don't want is to over, the more you mix a buttercream, the warmer it's going to get. So you don't want to mix it to a fact, to a point where the buttercream is really warm and then you add in your caramel and it can't split on you. So I'd say perhaps um, look at the amount of caramel you're adding in. And then also as well, what I would say to you is whip your buttercream up, but don't let it, don't let it whip for 20 minutes till it's too warm. And then, um, add your caramel in another thing not to do is to add your caramel in and then mix it for another 10 minutes because that can cause it to split as well so you want to get your buttercream nice and creamy and then what i would say to you is gently with the spatula fold through your caramel and um, i think that if you over mix it as well it can split so i'd say you're fine at the early mixing stages of buttering icing sugar but when you add your um uh, caramel to that buttercream you're better off just folding it through by hand that you're not over mixing it so that could be um, that could help um Sinead wants to know i'm making my first christmas pudding this year any advice um don't don't do it Sinead. <laughs> no, i'm joking um christmas puddings are a labor of love and i have made them for, for, for as long as i can remember and they really are they're beautiful don't get me wrong they're really nice when you have them on christmas day or over the christmas period they are lovely but they are uh they, they, they take a little bit of work um when you work in professional kitchens like i have um no problem um at all i'm glad that helps um i've been working in professional kitchens since i was 16 years old and in in that line of business um when you are a professional chef um, and you have the equipment on hand that come with working in a professional kitchen and um, you're talking five star hotels and uh, down to really really nice restaurants generally speaking you you, you could have the luxury of having like a combi oven or um, a steamer that you can actually just put your puddings in there press the steam button and walk away for eight hours and the following day when you come back in they're done that's the luxury of working in a professional kitchen and um, so when you're doing puddings and stuff at home it is a totally different ball game 100 percent, and i'd be the first to admit that and um, do i put my christmas puddings i haven't i'm not gonna lie to you i have made a christmas pudding now in, in a few years i have done when i've been at work but not at home and um, when you put your puddings into a pot or a steamer 
and um, people do it that way i generally don't do it that way i put my puddings into um, like a, a baking tray and fill it up with water and then put that into the oven i find that it's um a slower you're creating a lot of steam in the oven and you can walk away from it and not worry that the pot is going to dry out as such it will do the same in the oven but just not to the same extent i think sometimes when you're steaming stuff over the, the cooker gas can be quite an aggressive form of heat and it can uh, the water can boil off pretty rapidly so i like to put my christmas puddings into a deep tray fill it up with water again whenever you're putting your puddings in um Sinead, cover it with parchment paper, maybe a double layer, tin foil on top, tie it. We want it to be watertight. Um, and then I bake, I put mine in the oven in trays. That's how I do mine, but you can do it over the steamer. And again, the oven sets at just over 100 degrees and they generally take from anything, depending on the size you're making from five to eight hours. So it is a labor of love. And um, so I would be saying to you, you're probably better off doing a few of them when you're at it. Um, Ailish wants to know, Shane, if I use butter instead of suet, in my mince meat will it last as long um i would find i generally whenever this I, I don't put cubes of butter into my mince meat whenever i'm using butter because i have different recipes for a mince meat filling i generally melt my butter down and i cook it with brown sugar and kind of create almost like a caramelly paste and then I put my fruit in and it holds perfectly fine. And um, if you're a little bit worried, um, I'd stick with the suet if you're used to that. Because butter can go rancid and it can smell um, if it's left out at room temperature for a long period of time. Now, if you have plenty of alcohol in there, um, Ailish, then I think you're fine. Um, I don't think that you need to be too too worried if there's a good splash of alcohol that's obviously going to help preserve your filling and um, but if you've always used suet i probably would go with suet if that's what you're used to and um, again whenever i do use butter i do melt it down um, and put in my brown sugar and, and, and cook it until it starts to bubble um, and then i add in my my dried fruits and my grated apple and my orange zest and all that kind of stuff as well so i kind of feel by by treating heat treating the butter that way and um, it doesn't spoil as fast i'm not sure if that is actually the that there's a technical term for that if it's all in my head but that's generally what i do but again if you the suet is something that you are probably used to using i probably would say to to probably stick with that one um and to do yes that's more i think for the christmas puddings just to um do one in advance and the one thing i would say to you is the longer you leave a Christmas pudding, the better. It's kind of the same as a Christmas cake, but the longer you mature a Christmas pudding, the more those spices develop, the, the fruits soften up, um, and it's absolutely beautiful. So making a Christmas pudding very close to Christmas, you're not going to get that really mature, dark, caramelly, beautiful flavour. So that is just something to keep in mind as well. And it's it's kind of advisable to make your puddings well in advance, because again, the longer you leave them, the, the more the, the flavour comes out. So I'm just going to go through these questions again. I think I have all of these covered. Um, Christmas cake, gingerbread sort. I'm just looking here. Christmas treats. Eggnog is done. Icing sugar, fudge, buttercream. Um, oh, one more actually. There's one final question here as well. This comes in from Lorna. What's the best icing uh, to use for Christmas cake? This is 100% down to preference. You know, um, I remember when we were kids growing up, it used to be like the 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 spiky, dabbled, hard, royal icing, which was really nice. Um, I personally, at the moment, love like just a lovely layer of marzipan and a nice, soft, roll-out, ready-to-roll fondant icing. It's simple, it's easy, um, it's nice and soft. Maybe that's an age thing. Maybe <laughs> maybe the older you get, you just prefer to have a softer icing. Um, that would be my preference, just to use a ready-to-roll fondant icing. Uh, really do enjoy um, do enjoy that. Um, um, but you can use your royal icing. So your royal icing, basically, then again, is your is your whisked egg whites with um, glycerine. And then you can add in some lemon, uh, lemon juice and icing sugar. And um, obviously, then you cover your cake. You keep adding your icing sugar until you get a nice thick paste. And then you cover your cake and the longer you leave it, the harder it gets. So that's just something as well. Um, if you want an icing that uh, goes kind of really hard, then obviously don't use glycerine because glycerine will help the, the icing stay nice and soft. So if you want to kind of eliminate that and you, you're looking for a nice hard icing on the outside, then I would say definitely go down the route of um, taking out the glycerine. Once it's a softer while icing, you can leave that in. Um, but again, it's personal preference. So there's no 
best icing is really is down to taste i personally as i said like the fondant icing but that's just me um and yes i think that is all unless you have any other questions guys please do fire them at me now i said they can be um christmas baking questions or just baking questions in general while i'm here i'll try and answer them if i can down to what do you have for christmas dessert what is your signature bake do you go all out for dessert or do you keep the um all the energy for the start as a main course i used to try and mix it up every year and do something really different for dessert but the last couple of years we've kind of kept it nice and light nice and simple so um again as i said a meringue is definitely um top of the list it's nice and simple nice and light um but i have to admit i do love a trifle and i think with custard Again, I think that's an age thing. Anything with custard is um is a huge plus in my books. Okay, guys, I think that's all. There's no questions coming in. So I think I will love you and leave you. So again, um, if you're watching this now back um on playback, the annoying part is now when I save this down, all these questions will disappear. And um, so again, if you're watching this at a later stage, please do comment your questions underneath the video. And either myself or some of the team over in GEM will gladly answer them for you. Okay, guys, thank you so much for taking the last, what, 40 odd minutes out of your evening. I hope that you're all well. Curl up, enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will talk to you soon. And again, for anyone who's interested in any of my baking classes, online classes, please do pop on over to my website or my Instagram. Um, and I have some lovely Christmas ones coming up over the next couple of weeks. So yeah, that's all. Um, have a lovely evening, guys. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you all soon.